When the emblem of a massive aircraft carrier bearing the hull number 20 and named Zhejiang quietly surfaced online, did you ever imagine how the suspected nuclear-powered sea behemoth might reshape the Chinese Navy's global maritime footprint? Recently, military enthusiasts' attention has been captured by two images circulating on Weibo. Images posted by user Otisoldier clearly displayed the emblem of the carrier designated hull number 20 and named Zhejiang instantly sparking heated discussions across Chinese cyberspace. Based on the emblem design and related information, this carrier, referred to as the Zhejiang, is being constructed by Dalian Shipyard, a major shipbuilding facility in northern China. Its technical characteristics show significant differences compared to China's existing three carriers. China's three operational carriers, the Liaoning, Shandong, and Fujian, represent distinct developmental stages of its carrier technology. The Liaoning, a 60,000-ton medium carrier completed from the Veryag hull, marked China's first true capability for integrated sea-land-air operations. The Shandong is China's first domestically designed, developed, and constructed aircraft carrier, slightly larger than the Liaoning with optimized internal layout and onboard systems. The Fujian, meanwhile, is China's first entirely domestically designed and built catapult-equipped carrier, featuring a flat, straight-flight deck with electromagnetic catapults and arresting gear boasting a full load displacement exceeding 80,000 tons. The advent of the three-carrier era reflects the remarkable advancement of China's defense industrial capabilities and comprehensive national strength. Based on information circulating online, the most noticeable difference between the Zhejiang-class carrier and its predecessors, the ski-jump-equipped Liaoning and Shandong, as well as the electromagnetic catapult-equipped Fujian, lies in its significantly reduced island structure, which has been relocated aft to the starboard stern. This design feature is typically associated with nuclear propulsion systems, as nuclear-powered carriers eliminate the need for space reserved for conventional propulsion smokestacks and air intakes. Images circulating online show the KJ-600 early warning aircraft and J-35 stealth fighters flying above the carrier while the flight deck displays various types of carrier-based aircraft neatly arranged. This advanced aircraft configuration further suggests the vessel possesses formidable aviation capabilities. Based on these characteristics, numerous military enthusiasts speculate that this is almost certainly a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. As a power source for carriers, nuclear propulsion offers unmatched endurance advantages over conventional power, it eliminates the need for oiler replenishment, requires nuclear fuel rod replacement only every few years, and provides continuous electrical power. The U.S. Nimitz-class nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, for instance, are equipped with two reactors delivering a combined power output of 260,000 horsepower, with each reactor capable of operating for 13 years. While nuclear propulsion systems do raise concerns about radiation safety and efficiency, advancements in nuclear technology and enhanced safety measures have led to increasing acceptance of this power source among more nations. Meanwhile, Multiple indications suggest that China's southern shipbuilding giant, Jiangnan Shipyard, is constructing the carrier-designated hull number 19. This vessel will serve as the sister ship to the Fujian-class carrier. Regarding its naming, two primary speculations circulate among seasoned military enthusiasts. It will either be named Jiangsu or Guangdong, with one of these two names being the definitive choice. Following the Chinese Navy's naming conventions for surface combatants, aircraft carriers are traditionally named after coastal provinces by the Navy headquarters. This logic is evident from the Liaoning, Shandong, to the Fujian. Regarding hull numbers, the Chinese Navy adheres to a strict numerical sequence, with the Liaoning, Shandong, and Fujian's designations also reflecting a north-to-south deployment pattern. Therefore, Naming the 19th and 20th ships after coastal provinces aligns perfectly with this system. The recent online leaks suggesting the Zhejiang-class carrier, if confirmed, would mean China's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is destined for Zhejiang? This is undoubtedly thrilling news for military enthusiasts in Zhejiang and finally settles the long-standing speculation surrounding the naming of the 20th nuclear-powered carrier. If confirmed, Zhejiang, China's economically prosperous coastal province in the east, will proudly welcome the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier in the history of the Chinese Navy. Regarding the specific parameters of the Zhejiang-class carrier, such as displacement, number of elevators, electromagnetic catapult tracks, hangar area, and aircraft capacity, the information circulating online has not provided detailed coverage, reportedly to avoid disclosing sensitive information. However, one noteworthy point is that according to a report by the 1945 military website two years ago, China's planned Type 004 nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is projected to have a full load displacement exceeding that of the Nimitz-class carriers, 
and potentially surpassing even the Ford class, possibly becoming the largest aircraft carrier in human history by displacement. Should the Zhejiang project proceed steadily, it could very well become a true supercarrier, likely equipped with nuclear propulsion, integrating electromagnetic catapults and arresting gear systems alongside advanced digital array active phased array radar. It would undoubtedly represent the pinnacle of carrier technology. Crucially, the unlimited range afforded by nuclear propulsion would enable it to reach any globally accessible waterway or sea lane suitable for carrier operations, establishing it as a world-leading carrier. Such technological leaps will significantly enhance the overall strength and comprehensive combat capabilities of the Chinese Navy, while also markedly elevating China's international influence as a major power. From a broader perspective, the Chinese Navy has entered an unprecedented expansion cycle in recent years. The era of three aircraft carriers, the world's largest fleet of 10,000-ton destroyers, and the routine commissioning of amphibious assault ships and large landing craft have become commonplace. Yet beyond these dazzling flagship vessels, the fleet of comprehensive replenishment ships supporting distant sea operations is expanding in tandem. As China advances toward a new era of three aircraft carriers, plus a large destroyer fleet, such a massive surface force must be sustained by an adequate number of replenishment ships. Otherwise, all distant sea deterrence and training exercises would remain confined to maps. China's overseas bases remain extremely limited, primarily relying on Djibouti and Cambodia's Reem naval base. Their scale pales in comparison to the U.S. military's global network of ports. This means the Chinese Navy's supply system depends almost entirely on the fleet itself at sea, making replenishment ships the vital lung capacity determining the upper limit of distant sea operations. Tactically, the coordination among three aircraft carriers will also generate synergistic effects. In the future, J-35 fighters from the Fujian carrier could land on the Liaoning and Shandong carriers, while J-15Ts from the Liaoning and Shandong could land on the Fujian. This mutual landing capability among carrier-based fighters effectively enhances the carrier's long-range offensive and defensive combat capabilities. Looking back to November the 23rd, 2012, when China's first-generation carrier-based fighter, the J-15, successfully took off and landed on the Liaoning. The carrier-style sensation went viral, announcing to the world that the Chinese Navy had acquired long-range strike capabilities. Thirteen years later, the Chinese Navy has evolved from a single-carrier era to a three-carrier fleet, and now news of the nuclear-powered Zhejiang-class carrier has emerged. The Chinese Navy's aircraft carrier journey has progressed from initial breakthroughs to independent innovations, then to technological leaps, and now advances toward nuclear propulsion. Compared to conventional carriers, nuclear-powered vessels offer significant advantages, particularly their virtually unlimited endurance. This allows carrier strike groups to operate extended periods in distant waters, without frequent port calls for refueling, a critical capability for navies pursuing global reach. Of course, nuclear propulsion systems also carry inherent drawbacks, such as nuclear radiation safety risks and the inherent inefficiency of secondary circuits, driven by low-pressure saturated steam. However, with advancements in nuclear technology and accumulated operational experience, nuclear propulsion systems now incorporate multiple effective safety measures and have gradually gained broader understanding and acceptance in recent years. If the Zhejiang ship is indeed China's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, as rumored online, it would mark a major milestone in the Chinese Navy's journey toward deep-sea operations. It not only represents a technological achievement for China's shipbuilding industry, but also signifies that the Chinese Navy will gain unprecedented strategic depth. With the addition of more Type 903 and Type 903 replenishment ships to the fleet, coupled with the emergence of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, the Chinese Navy's future presence in any world ocean will no longer be merely a one-off demonstration. Instead, it will serve as the prelude to establishing genuine, long-term regional influence.